The next debate is about ketamine better than morphine for pain. Uh, and I think, where is it? Give it, give it. Okay, so the yes part is Dr. Mohammed Nassif, a uh, very close colleague of mine. He is uh, an ER physician in uh, Dubai. Uh, he's an educator and the regional faculty of the AHA. Uh, and also he's an assimilation advocate. So uh, let's see if ketamine works for us. All right, so ketamine versus morphine. Uh, basically what I'm gonna talk about, just have a few minutes, so it's going to be efficacy and safety of ketamine as an analgesic. We'll talk about how ketamine versus morphine is apples and oranges. They're not exactly the same thing. Uh, advantages of using uh, ketamine, trends about use ketamine and where things are going in various different modalities of treatment. Uh, the problem with morphine, and this is the thing we need to focus on, uh, a bit about the AHA and their guidelines of 2015, which included uh, opiate management, and a bit about history and how it, uh, it is changing and coming back again. Uh, conflict of interest, I only have one conflict of interest. For us, is a very good friend, but we have a tendency to disagree. And we kind of enjoy it, actually. So, right, efficacy and safety. Uh, really, looking at the evidence and the studies, this is a no-brainer. There are, you know, tens of studies, many of them systematic reviews and meta-analyses, hundreds of patients, and they all give a very similar conclusion. 0.3 milligrams per kilogram of IV ketamine is pretty much equivalent to 0.1 milligram uh, per kilogram of morphine. And, you know, uh, 0.1 milligram per kilogram, depending on your practice, some people say it's a low dose. I mean, last time I was admitted, I was admitted last year to hospital with uh, acute abdominal pain, they gave me four milligrams, and I'm not 40 kilograms, <laughs> right? So we actually tend to give lower in, in, in real practice. Uh, the, only, the main difference between them was ketamine was faster in action. So looking at 15 minutes uh, from the giving of the injection, the, the patients who had ketamine were more comfortable. Uh, there were no serious side effects in all of these studies, and uh, only just minor thing, dizziness, disorientation, pretty much similar to the morphine people. They also had dizziness, and uh, the only problem with morphine, some of them kind of stopped breathing, which was inconvenient. Vital signs were stable, and you know, everybody talks about ketamine and emergence. We don't give it because ketamine, emergence. Emergence, big problem. Ketamine, emergence, it's, uh, right? And all these hundreds of patients, four cases only, and I looked up all the details of them. Four cases only had emergence, and none of the cases, the, 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 per, the care provider thought of giving them any benzodiazepines. They kind of let it pass and nothing happened. So really, there wasn't any significant emergence that we're scared about. Now, apples and oranges. You see, morphine, uh, looking at the picture at the down, you know, morphine is kind of like a ramp. You know, you give a dose and it doesn't work, you give a bit more, give, doesn't work, give a bit more. They stop breathing, you start ventilating them. Right? Other than that, you know, people talk about vomiting and uh, allergic reactions. Yes, they are true, but let's face it. I don't think about them too much before I'm giving morphine. The only thing I'm worried about is, is the patient going to stop breathing? Now, ketamine is a bit more tricky. Maybe that's why it hasn't picked up as fast as morphine. Kind of, it's, it's a staircase. You know, there's an analgesic dose, which we talk about, 0.1 to 0.3, the sub-dissociative dose, this is the new fashion, new wish. Uh, there's a recreational dose. Uh, I haven't tried. There are some very nice YouTubes of people from the Netherlands trying to snort it and seeing the effects on themselves. Uh, there's partially dissociative. This is the thing which is bad. This is where the emergence happens. Uh, and then there is the dissociative part, which is what we commonly use, you know, giving a, a procedural sedation. So if you think about it, so if you give procedural sedation, looking at the staircase, you might end up, you know, on the way out, getting to the partially dissociative and getting emergence. But if you're focusing on the analgesic, the chances are much lower. Uh, of course, it's not as simple as that. Uh, you can see that the doses overlap, so there is a difference in how we react. So basically, with ketamine, you hit them with one dose and hope for the best. This is what makes us uncomfortable, but it's probably very effective. Now, advantages, very good safety profile, and when I, you know this bit in the top about safety profile, I got it from the psychiatry literature and the abuse literature. These are patients who are self-administering, they're going to the recreational dose, which is higher. They don't have ventilation support or anything, so if they do it wrong, they just die. 
All right. So uh, there is good uh, uh, protection of airway reflexes, coughing, swallowing, gag reflexes protected. Uh, most, how many people use it for procedure station? All right. It's fairly safe, and you guys are giving the higher dose of things. Uh, spontaneous ventilation, hemodynamic stability. The only problem, some people say it gives your blood pressure goes up, you know. Uh, and there's a very wide margin of safety. Very good evidence, especially in pediatric literature, about people getting 10 or much higher than the recommended dose, 10 times or much higher, but still uh, so well. People who get injured in recreational use, they usually hurt themselves. It's like they fall or have some kind of physical harm or get electrocuted. So that's how they die. It's not the medication. You can use it uh, intranasal as well as IV. The, the Netherlands people who snort it, they say it kind of burns. So basically, use an atomizer. Uh, and satisfaction is high. 85%, one study looked at satisfaction. 85% of patients said they would like to have the same pain, the uh, same medication for the same pain in the future. They probably went into the recreational phase, maybe. Uh, trends, it's gaining in, um, uh, some kind of uh, catchment in here with us. I mean, that's why we're here. We're talking about it. People are considering it. And there are other utilizations beyond the emergency department. You know, complex regional pain syndrome, uh, resistant seizures in the ICU setting, not in the acute setting. Uh, heroin and alcohol addiction. So if you listen to the Faraz lecture, you might want to listen to my lecture again as a treatment. And uh, treatment-resistant depression uh, as well. Uh, the, the challenge probably is anesthesiology, especially in North America. Uh, they are not getting trained as much in using ketamine. Uh, it's, uh, ketamine is the most common uh, general anesthetic worldwide, but it's mainly uh, austere circumstances or uh, porous areas. Uh, the problem with morphine, just a couple of minutes. Problem with morphine, 52,000 deaths in 2015. This is a study in the BMJ to last October. So this is very fresh stuff. It's on our minds. And this is an increase. It's not like a trend going down. This is four times an increase since 1999. Uh, so again, if you don't listen to me, this is your future. Uh, all right. One second. All right. Okay. Key thing. 2012, AHA, they included it in their guidelines. Why? Because more people were dying from opiate overdose than motor vehicle collisions. This is ridiculous, but that's the truth. Most of these people are dying from prescription medications. Uh, so really, you have to wonder, is history repeating itself? Once upon a time, cigarettes were good for asthma. And you know, you could see doctors in the advertisements. Nowadays, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> He took my picture. I don't know what he's going to do with it. All right. Thank you guys very much. Give us your email for the recreational issue. <laughs> All right. <laughs> OK, the next debate is about the, the no section of this uh, ketamine better than morphine. And Dr. Firas Jafar Najjar, uh, the residency program director and an emergency physician in the Rashid Hospital Trauma Center, uh, an excellent educator, and uh, really a person who has been dealing with, this, with these issues frequently. All right, so I'll leave you the floor, Firas. So, what's the difference between satisfaction and addiction? Okay, great. So, um, thanks, Mohammed. Uh, I call it round two, and the reason why I call it round two is uh, so last year we got round one, and for those who forgot it, uh, the referee was sitting on the same chair last year, and he decided that I knocked Mohammed out. So, the discussion last year with the flomazenil, and I give the evidence that flomazenil is the best drug. You remember that? <laughs> Great. So what about this year? Let me ask a question now. So for acute pain setting, how many of you will pick up to use morphine, and how many of you, morphine to start with? <laughs> Mohammed, look back. <laughs> you also. Great. Good. And how many for ketamine? OK. Good. Look for them, Mohammed. Use, uh, go for their hospitals, they will give it to you there. <laughs> Good. So I can't understand why people choose, uh, chose um, morphine more. Because if you look, you can find that it has a longer half-life. And we used to use it for a long time. So it's something that we use it. And we know the complication. And we know if we use a top-up doses or titrated doses, it can work in a very good way. 
Uh, having said that, I have to confess here that I really, really love ketamine. This t-shirt is in my wardrobe. I did not wear it today, but I really like it as a, uh, as a drug. Why? It's safe. It will not cause any respiratory depression. It's also safe. It will not cause addiction. And it will decrease addiction to morphine also. Moreover, many randomized controlled studies related to it. Yes. Cochrane reviews what's better than this drug. And even if you are a colorblind person, if you need to look and to have colors, take subtherapeutic dose of ketamine and you will start hallucinating and you will start having colors. So it's a very good drug. All evidence supporting it. So this is why you will go and you will find these papers to say that emergency departments, they love ketamine. Yes, we love it. And now I will approve. I think I will be the loser for this round. I have to admit that. So no addiction. Yes, no addiction at all. So if you will Google it, you will find ketamine addiction story. And this is a toll free number, Muhammad. You can call them and they will tell you about many stories. If you go to the States, it's among the most famous drugs now about recreational, as Muhammad called it, better satisfaction, as he called it again, or you will call it drug of abuse. Even in China, China, I'm not talking about the small country. Even in China, some studies done there, 21% of their abusers, they are comfortable or satisfied, as you said, with ketamine. Great. This is another toll-free number if you need. Also call them, and they will tell you that increasing abuse of ketamine is there in the uh, worldwide. So if you'll Google ketamine, I do apologize because I hide some of the elements, and the reason behind that, because it's a salat will give you this message. <laughs> so if, you'll, if you are interested in adult content, you can just click them, and Muhammad, just give you the simple example what will happen to the people. Go and click these uh, links. In fact, I'm interested about this one with the question mark there. So I know here we are not talking about, it seems like even you can end with cardiac arrest if you will use it as part of RSI. And it has a negative inotropic effect. I know it's many, most of the time it's undermined or covered with the, uh, a sympathomimetic effect, but in uh, hemodynamically ill patients, you can end with death. What about the randomized controlled studies? Yes, this is our nightmare. A lot of studies supported uh, ketamine. Let us see. So Mohammed last year, he said all my studies were old, outdated, and they are old. This year, you use what? The, the recent one? OK, good. So let's see. So this is one of the studies comparing, I mean, low dose ketamine um, uh, to be used in the emergency department. And if you will see, so this part, they use only morphine and placebo. They receive the drug faster, comparing to this group, which received morphine and 0.3 milligram per kg um, uh, ketamine, and they ended with more side effects of dizziness, nausea, and vomiting, which Mohammed said, just it's normal thing to have it. But as you, you can see here, it was not given alone. It was given with what? With morphine. So it is just used as an adjunct. And this study just give, give us the outcome for two hours. So what will happen after two hours? We don't know. OK, let's see more with ants. Is it used alone or with morphine? So you can see all these studies. Ketamine was used to reduce the opiates, ketamine used to reduce the morphine consumption, and morphine and ketamine is superior to morphine. So it is not ketamine versus morphine till now. OK, let's go more now. Ah, it seems that this title, there is no with or and. Let's see. So what they did here, 35 patients, and among these 35 patients, this group, they received ketamine, but 16% of them also received morphine uh, by the end. And this group, they consider them as insufficient data. My understanding that if they are insufficient data, I will consider them as no improvement. 
So it's a little bit a different way of interpretation of the, of the data. And for me, I do care about their conclusion. By the end, they said it's an adjunct again. So it's with. I tried, Mohammed, my best, OK, to reach something. So Cochrane, for sure Cochrane now will support that. So Cochrane, in, in, uh, in their review, it's about post-operative pain. They are not talking about, I'm sorry? Yeah, I will come to the blue line. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. So it's post-operative. It's not in the emergency department, guys. OK, and what you find here is, again, effective reducing morphine requirement. Two minutes? One, one. OK. So it's an old study, as Mohammed mentioned. It's in 2006. Let's see the 2015 study, what they said. 2015 studies with a drone, and it's amended. So no more studies about it. Let me just conclude with this one, which is the recent study. They compare more, uh, ketamine as a single dose bolus versus IV infusion. And the reason behind that, as they said here, is the side effects with the single dose ketamine. So it seems that single dose ketamine, it has a side effects. So, and a very good uh, review on the uh, Rebel EM. So in conclusion, morphine is still the cornerstone of pain management in the emergency department. You can think about ketamine as an adjunct and not as a sole medicine for patients with hemodynamic instability, patients who got intractable chronic pain, or patients with induced hyperalgesia uh, related to morphine. So keep calm and keep continue using morphine. It's a good drug. Thank you. So we still have really um, good debate still with the morphine and the ketamine, which uh, I really like. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we did enjoy it a lot. Uh, if you have questions for the speaker, we're supposed to be finishing this session at 3. And we are a little bit uh, off time by five minutes. So if you have questions to the speakers, uh, please stay. Uh, otherwise, uh, the, the next session will start soon.